In this video, I want to introduce the concept of input that we can start using for our tests and our prototypes. And I'm also going to briefly talk about Unity's newer input system at the end. If for whatever reason, they eventually move entirely to the new input system, I'll show you how to convert what we're doing into the new input system. So for now, we're gonna work with the old one because it's simple and it's very little overhead, but if you ever need to convert to the new one, you can pretty easily. So first I'm going to create a new game object, create empty, and we'll call this input controller. And we don't really need to zero this out, but we're going to anyways. Okay, and we're going to make a new script, new C Sharp script called input controller. All right, so we have our input controller and we're going to attach the script to our input controller just so that it gets the behavior. All right, so let's open that up. And the trickiest thing when it comes to input to remember is that you want to listen for input every single game engine loop. For example, if we were to uh, listen for input inside of start, we're only listening, like we have our if input or whatever, we're only getting this condition to be true the very first frame that this, this comes into play. And we don't wanna do that because we wanna affect game objects if we're holding down the button and then we want it to stop whenever we release the button. We need our input to be inside of update. So in almost all cases, you're going to want your input to, to not be in start. You want that to be in a consistently called loop and something like update makes the most sense. So inside of update, we're going to listen to see if a key was pressed. Easiest way to do that in, in Unity's older system is if, parentheses, input accesses their input system, input dot get key, and we have two options here. We have, well, we have three options. We have get key down or get key up. We can also do get key, which I guess I'll show you too. First, let's start off with get key down. And then, another parentheses inside of that, we wanna tell it which key to listen for. So we can see right here in our um, IntelliSense, our key code key to listen for. So if we type in capital K key code dot, and then we get a list of key codes here. We're gonna say space, and this is our condition. If the input system detects that we have pressed down the space key, then, We'll leave a debug.log, start space press. Cool. Okay, we'll also do one for released. So get key up, same key, debug.log end space press. And finally, let's just also print every single frame that it's held down, or every uh, loop tick that it's held down. Input.get key, and that's just get key, key code dot space. All right, and then we'll say debug.log held. Okay, so what's happening is inside of update, we are listening, and the very next loop that we detect the space to start being pressed, that's get key down, then we will print the statement. Every single frame that it's held down, we will print the statement. And as soon as we release it, we will print the statement. So let's save. Let's go into Unity. Okay, so now we are going to press play. And you'll notice that nothing's gonna happen at first. And that's because we're now detecting input. It's not inside of start. So if we click down inside the scene, just to make sure that we're active in our window, make sure you click in the game view and you press space bar, you'll see that the first moment that you pressed it down, the first thing that will get called, that's get key down, we'll see start space press. And as long as we're holding it down, you see we get 60 different frames with space held. And then whenever we release it, we get, and you know, we can keep testing this. But now we're testing input. And the cool thing about that, if I get out of play mode, is now we can start to run our tests. We can say, do something in the game if we press the space bar. And we, would, we could put that there, like change the color of a light or spawn an object or whatever. And we can start to do some interesting game logic if we are now listening for input rather than doing it automatically inside of start. 
I also mentioned that I want to talk about Unity's newer system in case they ever replace the old one, just so that you can see how to do this very similar type of thing inside of the, the newer one. It's a little bit more complicated. First of all, I don't think in most cases we need this right here to detect if the space bar is held. You know, we could always just flag a Boolean as on get key down whenever we press it and then turn it back to false when we press up. So I think in many cases we don't really need that. So I'm just gonna simplify. Just want to show you that we could. Now we want to figure out how to do get key down and get key up with the new input system. So if I save this, before I start doing this, I'm gonna tell you that if you if you don't need to use the new input system, I wouldn't recommend doing it yet. Honestly, I wouldn't even recommend following along. I would just watch the video because you need to import a new package. And if you import it, uh, it's a little bit harder to clean out the old stuff and it's gonna be harder to follow along with demos later on. So don't do this section, just watch. But if you find that you really have to use a new input system or you just really want to, then um, I'll show you how to undo that as well. So what I'm gonna go to is window and we need to import the new input system using the package manager. Go up to input system. You can see that it's pretty recent to whenever I'm making this video, but so it hasn't fully replaced their old system yet and who knows if, if it ever will. And if you go down inside of the packages and you hit install, it will import the newer input system and it may take a little bit. And at some point you're gonna, you may get a warning message like this, which is basically telling you that it needs to do some extra conversions and you're gonna need to restart the editor. So I'm just going to click yes. And I'm also going to save my scene. Now your editor is gonna restart. So just wait a moment for that. And once it restarts, you'll see that the, the input system is installed and up to date and all that, all that good stuff. If I open up input controller, it doesn't really work with the old system. So if I were to save this and I were to hit play, you'll see that we get these errors that are just counting up every frame. So that's what I meant by if you use a new input system, you have to go all in on it. And it is a little bit more complicated. So I don't recommend doing it if you're still learning, unless you have to. Um, you know, may, again, maybe Unity will eventually entirely deprecate their old input system, but until then it's really, easy to use for prototyping. So let's try and, and do our previous logic with the new input system. So first of all, I'm gonna comment this out, slash star and star slash. Okay, I'm gonna comment this out just so we can use it for reference. But what we wanna do is use the new input system. I'm gonna also get rid of start. So what we want to do is use the new input system to try and recreate get key down, get key up. So to do that, the syntax is gonna look a little bit different. With the new input system, we need to access different control devices and detect if an input on that device was pressed. And so what that's gonna look like is if, if I start typing in keyboard, so capital K, keyboard, and you'll see it doesn't really know what to do yet, Visual Studio is gonna help me autocomplete because if you want to use a new input system, you need to use the namespace up at the top, or you can type it in here. But if you click this top option right here, it will automatically put it at the top. But let's say instead of doing that, I'm just gonna go to the top and show you that you can using Unity Engine dot input system. If I put this namespace at the top, think of this as a library that has additional code wrapped inside of it. So now that I put that at the top, I have access to this right here. So we'll say if keyboard dot, and this is kind of weird, but you have to say keyboard dot current because we can actually switch devices. So I want to get the current one or what if we had multiple keyboards or whatever. And then we need a key and there's a long list here, but I'll just tell you that we're looking for space key dot. And then we have two primary options. Was press this frame or was release this frame? And you can already kind of match this down here, but we'll say was press this frame. So if we press the space key this frame on our keyboard, it kind of reads pretty, pretty well, but again, still kind of hard to remember. Then we want to debug.log. We'll just flag this as new input space press. 
And we'll also do if keyboard.current.spacekey.was release this frame, debug.log new input space release. Okay. All right, here we go. If we pressed it or if we released it, just like our old code right here, save it. Now the interesting thing with the new input system is you can actually create input maps and do that inside of your assets and do a lot of other crazier stuff. But I wanted to show you the really easy one line method to, to call a button press. Your Unity editor may need to recompile a few things. You'll notice that we still have this, but we're these errors, but we're clearing it on play. So if we press play now and you wait for it to compile, you see how it cleared it out. If we click down in our game view and we press space, we get our new input presses, which is pretty cool. Now remember, we're if we're using the new input system like this, you can see how it's a little bit more complicated. We can't use the old one. Let's say that you were following along and you decided, oh wait, I don't want to use the new one. Let's look at how to strip this out and go back to the old one just just to show how you can undo this stuff. Now, the first thing you may want to do is just comment out, right? You just want to comment this out. Because as soon as you take this out, it's going to give you a compiler error anyway. So let's just avoid that. Okay, so we have everything commented out. Let's save this and we will minimize. Okay, you may need to recompile or something there. Now, in order to uninstall the new Unity system. Like again, um, maybe you decide you don't want to use it. Go back to your package manager, go to your input system and click remove. So we're going to remove the new input system. And that may take a little, little while to do. Now you may remember that we needed to re restart our machine when we converted last time. I will tell you ahead of time that that's not going to uh, fix it. One last thing that we need to do is we need to go into our edit and go to project settings. And you're gonna go down to player. Whenever you import the new input system, it changes this down here inside of your player settings to use the active input handling to new. If we wanna go back to the old one, we, we still need to uh, click on old and hit apply. Now, I actually have not tested that that both feature. So, I mean, maybe that will work for you, um, but I'm just gonna go back to the old one. Okay, and once we restart, you'll see that it's not even recognizing this namespace up here. So I'm going to delete that, save. Let's also uncomment our old input system code, save. And then let's, let's go back and try it one last time with the old system. Hit play. Click down on our window, start, okay, cool. Okay, so that was a very long demo just to show you how to use the new input system and then how to remove it if you didn't want it. And the reason I'm showing you this is because Unity is kind of in flux at the moment where they've just introduced the new input system and they're not, they haven't said for sure if they're gonna deprecate the old one or not. And I'm just gonna keep using the old one just because it's very simple and, and easy and you don't need to install extra packages. But if you decide that you want to use a new one, just know that you can pretty easily and that's how you do it. But if you decide that you don't want to, that's how you can go back to the old one. And it's kind of up to you. Like if if you see me using the old one in any future demos, just know that you can easily convert it to the new one. And I wanted you to know how to do that.